happened with Shadow of the Beast is, whilst we were still working on um, you know the original 8-bit stuff, uh, I, I got hold of the Amiga reference manual, Addison Wedley, Wesley uh, book it was, and I was fascinated by what it could do and how it could challenge some of the arcade hardware with it, and just designed on paper actually this split-screen um, system for uh, which level should scroll at which speed, and I did the, uh, the drawing on paper in pencil of all the levels and the speeds and where the trees would be and which play field all of the diff different bits and bobs would be on. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't the principal programmer on the game, but I designed all of that. And then that sort of sat to one side whilst we were working on this game called Ballistics, which we finished, and we took Ballistics to see Psygnosis, because I'd always been fascinated by Psygnosis, actually, and the whole Roger Dean-esque uh, image, the black boxes with the Roger Dean artwork and so on. We some amazing artists at that company. And, uh, you know, it took that game to see them. But we also had this little demo, a Shadow of the Beast, up our sleeves, which we took down a few months later, and it was literally just a demo of the guy on the screen running left and right with all those 13 layers of parallax scrolling. And they published uh, ballistics for us, and I think it's safe to say that it really did blow them away when they saw this demo of Shadow of the Beast. I mean, there was no game there, you know, this is a very early demo, but it just looked like a Psygnosis game. I mean, all the artwork was created, you know, ourselves, but it was done very much in the style of Psygnosis, and that was not an accident, really, because I was a big fan of their artwork anyway, and I really wanted Psygnosis to publish it, so we kind of packaged it as best as we could that would make them say, yeah, we want that, and, uh, you know, and it got a huge amount of support from them.